Hello everyone and welcome to the workshop. My name is Faisal Jahangiri. I'm Vice President of Clinic Affairs at Access Neuro Monitoring. Today we are going to talk about brainstem auditory evoke potential setup and recording. Brainstem auditory evoke potential, they are performed uh, in order to minimize uh, hearing loss uh, during, during the surgical procedure. Uh, the surgical procedure uh, involving the eighth cranial nerve or facial nerve, they have a high risk of hearing deficit. So performing uh, and giving a feedback to surgeons is very, very critical during this type of surgical procedure. Uh, the setup is, uh, is simple. So we have to uh, use three electrodes for recording. A1 is used in, on the left side anterior to the ear on left tragus. A2 on the right side and front of the ear and we do CZ on the head. Uh, the CZ scap electrode, CZ is again according to 1020 system, is measured a midpoint between nasion and inion, 50% uh, of that point. If the surgery is being performed uh, at A1 and A2 level, you can place the electrode in alternate side that's behind the ear, which is M1 and M2. M1 is the mastoid process on the left side and M2 is the mastoid process on the right side. Uh, for stimulation, uh, we use two type of uh, tubes, uh, the extension tubes, uh, the, uh, the blue tube is used on the right side, the right tube is used on the right side. Uh, the in ear, they are connected to ear inserts, the ear inserts come in three different sizes, one is grey which is pediatric and the other adults are in yellow color but there are two sizes, small and large and depending on what type, uh, how big is the ear canal, you can select either pediatric or medium or large uh, adult size. Uh, the key point here is to make sure you, uh, once you place all your stimulation electrode uh, and recording electrode, you secure uh, the electrode and make sure the tube is not king. If the tube is king, it's going to block the sound conduction and you will not be able to get any responses at all. Uh, we can also do uh, recording from, uh, from tympanic membrane, it's known as electrocochleogram. Uh, that's a preferred response, recording from the cochlea. Uh, in order to do that, either you can put a cotton wick electrode soak in saline uh, next to the cochlea before you put the ear inset or you can use a uh, gold foil electrode which is a uh, gold wrapped around the uh, foam insert and you can record from there too. Um, so that's uh, a second recording and it gives you information about the blood supply. So if you do, a, if you want to do auditory vocal potential in the OR, try to do a peripheral response which is electrocochleogram and do a, at least two channel of um, ABR recording, uh, recording from A1 CZ and A2 CZ. The final thing is have to make sure the alert criteria. The alert criteria is if there's a half millisecond delay, you have to alert the surgeon that's something wrong. Because if the delay is stayed there, patient, even the nerve is not damaged, patient will wake up with a deficit. So half millisecond is alert criteria and if the delay of the waveform is more than one millisecond, then it's the intervention. So you have to stop or you have to inform the surgeon, they have to remove the detractor, do something, so the signals come back. So that's a very important key factors or key point to remember.